Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, I'm Morielle. Today we are doing another installment in Makeup Artist Recreations. I am so excited, it's been a long time since I've done this. So without further ado, let's do some makeup inspired by Pony Park. Okay, so this morning I fell down a rabbit hole because she uploaded a video on her Morphe collaboration and I already did a video duping the vibes of that palette. It is a beautiful palette. TLDR, if you haven't seen that video, the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette is a fantastic alternative to that palette. Not that it's exactly the same, not that I'm claiming that, you know, her palette was unoriginal or copied or anything like that. I do feel like it's very characteristically her, but realistically speaking, I don't need another palette like that, so I did that video already. Then I went through a rabbit hole of looking at her other videos and I found that there's a certain technique that she does that I really like and so I wanted to incorporate all of them in a pony-esque makeup look and some of those features are really kind of soft straightened brows, you know like more Korean style brows, a really glowy complexion so my skin is beaming, it's glowing. I actually went a little bit lighter on the coverage today as well. Some light soft eyes, I always find that her eyeshadow is not very strong so I did really really light eyeshadow. Um, wing liner, softly done with pencils, um, a double line on the bottom which is something that I don't always do. Blush placement placed right up here at the center of my cheeks and of course a soft blotted matte lip. So that is my interpretation of her typical look. I feel like it looks very wintry. I'll put up some pictures of inspiration here um, and that is it. Let's jump straight into the video. All right, so for today's face, I'm just gonna start out with my Born This Way concealer and I'm actually gonna use this probably like a foundation. So I'm gonna take out two like pumps of it, not two pumps, but like two little pieces of it. And I'm going to Take that all around my face. I'm gonna try to be really thin about it. Because one of the things I noticed about Pony Park is that she uses a really thin layer of highly pigmented makeup to make her base nice and thin, but also quite uh, blemish free. And then she layers on different products afterwards. By the way, underneath this, I have a layer of moisturizer that has not fully sunken into my skin yet. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the moisturizer to still be a little bit emollient and dewy on my skin. So that way, as I blend in this layer of concealer, it has kind of somewhere to, to spread and go. I just have the idea to do this because my Too Faced Born This Way concealer is a little bit on the drier side. It's not a very moist and dewy concealer with a lot of movement on its own. It can dry down to be a little bit stiff. So that's what we are doing. And I'm going to take my finger with whatever remains and get around the nose area. Okay, we're going to use the Instant Age Rewind. And you can see that that's just a hair more brightening. I'm trying not to use a ton. Just enough to kind of brighten up the areas that I feel like need a little bit more dimension. For the brows today, I'm going in with my brow powder. I'm going to create a soft, straight-ish eyebrow. Okay, for today's look, I'm going to go into my NYX Ultimate Utopia palette. It's been quite a few uh, months or weeks since I've, probably not months, but weeks since I've used this. There's tons of shades in here, but I'm really kind of leaning into more of the um, neutrally, taupey, warm slash berry shades. Uh, I don't really know exactly what I want to do for today. I think I'm going to dip into this shade. She tends to use really neutral eyeshadows, and I like the way that she often tends to build them up softly. Oh, and I've already started too strong. Oh no. Okay, so this is pretty much the only eyeshadow we're gonna put on the whole eyes today, and it's already too much. Ugh, how do I fix this? I'm just gonna blend, blend this out, I guess, like to be really quite diffuse, but this is already too much shadow. Yikes, 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 okay. I'm just taking a big fluffy brush at this point to see if I can try to blend out the edges to be nice and soft. Oh no, it's already too much. It's too much, it's too much. Ah. On the lower lashes, I'm gonna go into this khaki color, this one. And I'm just gonna hit my lower lashes so they have a little bit of contour. I don't really want anything too intense here. And likewise for the eyes, I don't want anything too intense. I'm just gonna go into this kind of rosy color just so I can have a little bit of sparkle and shine. Nothing intense, nothing super metallic or super foiled. I just want there to be some color there. So this is pretty close to my skin tone. So you pick something that's pretty close to your skin tone that just allows the natural contour of the eye to show through. So whatever the eyeshadow we put down before, I want it to look really kind of watercolory and soft. That is the eye look right now. It's pretty understated. It's not super glam. It's not super dramatic. And the reason why is because we're going to go in with a glitter. Okay, so I'm going to take my little, um, I like to use a smaller brush just to be a little bit more precise. I'm going to use a little bit of a, a liner brush here. I'm going to dig into my glitter and I'm just going to concentrate it on the lower lash line right here on the lower lash line and I'm going to put a tiny bit on the upper lash line as well right in the center 
and you can actually, um, I'm actually just going to take a finger for that one. I'm really kind of soft and gentle. This is supposed to be kind of like a nude, watery eye look, if that's, um, if that's the right word for it. I'm going to go into my highlight and contour palette. I'm just going to highlight my brow bone area right here, just to soften up that edge a little bit more. And for blush, here is the interesting thing. We are going to place the blush placement right at the top of the cheeks. She calls it a watery cheek or a watery makeup, and I think that's such an interesting way to put it. So we're going to put the blush really high up and just pretty much at the center of the face. And I'm using a very nude blush. This is Romantic Rose from Milani. So you don't want it to be a super strong blush per se, just something that can bring a little bit of color back into the cheeks. And I'm focusing it right on the center Right underneath my eye area. Now unfortunately the color wasn't cool enough so I'm going into a very very cool shimmery pink highlight. This is the uh, Bombfire Highlighting Shadow Blush Duo in Game Day. So the top one is pretty dark. I'm not gonna use that one and the bottom one looks like a really nice highlight uh, pinky shimmer <clears throat> and it's a very cool tone pink and you're gonna see that it's creating a nice sheen on the cheeks as well and it's turning the blush a little bit more purpley blue cool toned which I like for today. I'm gonna go into a little bit of nose highlight and a little bit in the inner corner. This is just a soft brown from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm doing a really gentle wing. Perhaps crucially, I added a second line underneath and I'm gonna go in filling the blanks with a white liner. My white liner is not really great, which is why I can do this. If your white liner is really opaque, you might not wanna use a white liner, but maybe a white uh, eyeshadow. Um, but because my white liner is dirty, <laughs> I can do this just to clean up the edge in the middle. I want to have that negative space effect. And if you could, kind of get that lash line as well. Pony also uses this technique to line her upper lash line with liquid liner, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take some false lashes and I'm going to measure them. I mean, they look okay, actually, in terms of measurement. I really like this lash glue. If you are new to my channel, this is the Ardell clear lash glue in a bottle. It looks like this. It's like a completely clear bottle. I bought mine at CVS. It is bulletproof. This stuff is really strong. Um, it could be a little bit irritating if your eyes are sensitive to watering. If, uh, you know, it definitely makes my eyes burn <laughs> a little bit, but the hold that this guy has on my eyes is unlike anything else I've ever tried. And you can lay down your lashes so quickly and so effectively. I mean, that took hardly any time at all. All right, now for the fun part, the red lip. All right, so this is the lip color we're gonna use. It's called Rubino, and it's this beautiful dark red from the Kaleidos Lip Clay Collection. I'm gonna take an eyeliner because I don't have a lip liner, but I'm just gonna overline my lips a teeny tiny bit with this nude color. It's technically a copper eyeliner, but I would use a nude liner. I was okay using the copper because it's pretty close to my natural lip shade. It's not super dark, it's not super light. Um, I mean, it's not perfect. I probably should get a liner, but I don't have one. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a tinted balm just to create a base for today's look. This is a slightly pinkish reddish balm. This is the one in Fig, no, Rhubarb from Burt's Bees. Okay, so that is the base. Now we're gonna go in with three layers of liquid lipstick, supposedly. So layer one, only get the inner side, press, pat out. Okay, so because we had those lip colors underneath, it already created a little bit of nuance. Let's go into layer number two. And I'm not doing really thick, chunky layers here either. I'm doing a pretty light, blotted application. I'm keeping one finger for application and then one finger for smudging. So this is my applying and this is my smudging. Okay, and actually this is a pretty deep lip color. I wanna brighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna grab something else. Okay, I went into my stash and I found another color called Dahlia. Dahlia is a much brighter red. Let me just get that center one more time. Okay, and that is it. I feel like I look like I was bitten by the inside of a rose. Let's zoom out and call it a day. I just got more piercings done yesterday. I got my tragus and my helix done on this one. So here, up here, and that down there. I had another helix down here, but it was really hard and it kept um, getting irritated and eventually got ripped out at the hair salon. And so that piercing is no more, but today's look is like this. I feel like I look a lot more intense than hers. She looks super bright and super innocent. She's like really, really soft with her bright pastel eyes on her really watery cheeks. My skin is glowing and I don't know what I used, but look at my skin. 
gosh. Okay, I'm actually really obsessed with this look. We're actually gonna set it. Yay, we're gonna set it with some setting spray. Okay, well, I don't know where my regular setting spray went, so let's just set it with this guy. Really nice fine mist. This is the final look. I really like it. I'm gonna go grocery store shopping right after this, and maybe it'll be too much, but maybe it isn't. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it and it looks nice, and uh, you are inspired to do some makeup artist recreations. They're some of my favorite videos to do. I know today's video wasn't directly um, linked to anyone in particular, but I really wanted to just get on here and play with some cute makeup, so that is it. I'm feeling really nice. I'm feeling pretty confident, actually. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and see you in the next one. Bye, guys.